Let's look ahead to Wednesday. There are 10 games on in the NBA. Injury updates, streaming options, it's all coming up. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I only discovered what the NFL was because of Taylor Swift. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Go and uh, give a double bang. Hit the uh, watch the video. Listen to the audio. You don't actually have to listen to it or you have to watch it. Just let them play through. Thumbs up, bell, comments, and the trade deadline show Thursday, February the 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern. We might be at 1,000 pre-banks, so go and uh, make sure you can get it to 1,000. Go ahead and hit like, and the link is up the top there. All right, we are here to look ahead to Wednesday. There are the 10 games on, only one team on the back-to-back there as well, and that is the uh, Chicago Bulls. Coming in, so let's have a look at some injury updates. As usual, there is always injury news dropping as I'm doing these shows, so things will change, and always make sure you're checking up on the latest information. Gordon Hayward's not going to play for the Hornets. Kyle Lowry's not going to play for the Hornets. Uh, Zach Levine's out. Pat Williams is out for a couple of weeks. 82-game legend. He's out for a few weeks there. Isaiah Livers is going to be out for the Wizards. Isaiah Stewart is going to be out for the Pistons. Duncan Robinson, who the Heat ruled out midway through last game with an illness, is now in the concussion protocol. Very, very strange illness. Didn't even say it, like uh, concussion assessment, head injury, just out with an illness. Cool. Great. Anyway, he's out for a couple of games at least here. Tari next season is out. Gary Harris will be out. Julian Strouther's out. Dorian Finney-Smith's out with his ankle issue. Daron Sharp is out with his knee sprain. And then on this next page, I thought Bowl was going to be out, but Bowl Bowl's actually been upgraded to questionable. So that's a W. Shaden Sharp is out. LaBello Ball, I thought would be questionable. They said that he might be back this game and he's dealing with soreness. I don't know what's going on with that team, which is an evergreen statement that I continue, can continue to say. Um, but he's doubtful with the ankle soreness. And the Mavs have just dropped a million injury updates. Sick. Great. Love it. Oh, my God. All right. Luca is out. Derek Lively is out. Kyrie Irving is out. Dante Exum is doubtful. And Derek Jones is doubtful. They've got nobody. That is massive Jaden Hardy time. So that's great. Like I said, always stuff. Um, is you know, There's always going to be things that change every single moment. So I've done all this show to tell you about the stream options for tomorrow. And now, like, Jaden Hardy's at the top of the list. Because Luca, who's been playing, some might say, too many minutes. Me. I'm someone. Um, and then Lively. Everyone's out. There's no... Oh, my God. That is like... Is that five starters? They started this lineup. Luca, Kyrie, Lively, Exum, Jones. They started that five. And they're all out. Wowee. All right. So that just came through. So you can ignore when we talk about that later on. Um, Darius Garland has been upgraded to questionable. So it looks like he will return on Wednesday. Sasha Vazenkov is dealing with an ankle sprain for the Kings. He's questionable. Herb Jones has popped up with some uh, adductor issues. He is questionable for the Pelicans. Um, like I had all the Mavericks here on this list. Uh, Dante Exum, doubtful. Kyrie, out. Derek Jones, doubtful. Um, Luca out. Lively, out. Mike Conley. Questionable with that hamstring issue for the Wolves. Uh, Zach Collins, questionable with his ankle for the Spurs. Nikola Jokic popped up as questionable with a back issue. That is very intriguing. Jalen Williams, the Bronco, left the last game in the last minute with an ankle problem. We have not heard an official update on Jalen Williams at this point with that ankle problem. So hopefully we get something coming through soon, but nothing official there on that one. Grayson Allen is officially questionable. For the Phoenix Suns. And then we've got Miles Bridges who popped up as probable. Just be careful when you read your fantasy updates and your fantasy sites. Because some of them will say Miles Bridges is game time decision or day to day or whatever. Like he's, there's a difference between probable and questionable. So Bridges is probable, meaning he's going to play almost definitely. Um, doubtful, which is what Lamello is, means he probably won't play. But he's not officially out. We treat him as out and we treat probables as in. Uh, so Miles Bridges is a probable. Cade Cunningham is probable. We know that he had a probable last week and he was ruled out. I, I expect that he plays here without too much concern. And Ben Simmons did hurt his knee towards the end of last game, which you never want to see. 
Um, he is probable here as well. Hopefully, there's no issue with that, but being listed probable is good. I'll tell you now, or I'm telling you here that Evan Mobley is in for Wednesday because this is a back-to-back. It's a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back for the Cavs. So I'd expect that Mobley sits one of those two games. I did have him listed questionable just because I didn't know which one they'd sit him. So it looks like he will play on Wednesday and then most likely be out Thursday as he recovers from his um, knee problem. Oh, that, that uh, Dallas thing, man, that's terrible. Anyway, there's only the one team playing that Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back, and that is your Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's have a look at the stream of the day options, understanding that Jaden Hardy is going to be on this list now, even though he's not here at the moment. Actually, maybe I'll just go and have a look um, and see where I would slot him in. All right, so I went and had a look at the um, um, adjustments to the daily projections at Basketball Monster, and Hardy would slide in there as the 12-team category league streamer. Uh, ahead of Ayo Desumu. So it'd be Nick Richards. Let, let's do it that way. Again, ignore what your eyes are telling you. Let's go Nick Richards, Jaden Hardy, John Isaac, Cody Martin. And then for points leagues, we go Jaden Hardy as well in both Yahoo and ESPN. Because again, that's sort of come out of nowhere. I was glad I was able to um, able to catch that. But you know, things change and that is a wild swing. That's one of the biggest like uh, value change swings that you'll see because of the, Dal- the Dallas Mavericks and having yeah, literally everybody out. So that's where we're at with that. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors has teamed up with me and Locked On Fantasy Basketball to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. So when you're looking across the waiver wire, you might be able to find someone that's a guaranteed fit on your roster. So who have I got for eBay's guaranteed fit fantasy pick of the week? Well, I'm going to go off the script that I created myself and tell you that Jaden Hardy is the guy that we want to look at here. Kyrie Irving, who told us he would miss zero games, has now missed four in a row, and I don't know when he's going to be back. Luca's ankle and lower body has been a problem all season, and Jason Kidd has been pumping too many minutes into him. And Hardy, at least for Wednesday, is going to be awesome. And sometimes in fantasy, we just have to look at the day ahead. Hardy might have extended value. He even played well last game as well. There's a huge opportunity here for Jaden to put up some numbers. So going at him now, see what you get out of it on Wednesday, and then we'll adjust when we find more of those injury updates across the Dallas Mavericks roster moving forward. But Jaden Hardy is in with a huge opportunity. And for at least one day, I reckon that's going to be a guaranteed fit on your roster. That's much like with eBay and cars because they've got the eBay guaranteed fit policy. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brake hits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever it is that your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride first time, every time, or your money back. And at these prices, you're burning rubber and not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Okay, let's go back in now. And we've done the stream of the day and adjusted the stream of the day. Let's look at the 10 games. What is on my radar over there? First one is the Bulls and the Hornets. This is a back-to-back for Chicago. So obviously, we always need to pay some level of attention to Alex Caruso there. For the Hornets, they're going to be without Mark Williams, shockingly enough. Gordon Hayward's going to be out. is going to be out. I want to watch PJ Washington because at the moment, he's getting a lot of minutes. That's not always the case. And they started him over Ish Smith last game. Whether they do that again and they let... Like Cody Martin runners, their point guard remains to be seen. But PJ's minutes were well up, and he's you know a huge uh, opportunity for production at the moment. In terms of streams, Desumu still is the Bulls guy that I look to. Big opportunity with no Zach and Pat Williams. And for Charlotte, I do like Cody Martin as a stream guy. He's available like ninety seven percent of leagues. He might even sniff twelve team value to be honest, because he was pretty good last game. The opportunity is still there in this one. I don't think it's going to be there when Lamelo returns. But guess what? Lamelo hasn't returned, so he's not here. Next game is the Clippers and the Wizards. I want to see what's going on with Russell Westbrook again. It's all about trying to figure out role and minutes. You can always stream him if you want, understanding some of the deficiencies. But when I'm giving long-term value looks at Westbrook, it's minutes. Like a 20-minute Russell Westbrook, I don't care in a 10 or 12 team league. A 26-minute one, I do. And I just haven't had any confidence in that being the case. For the Wizards, Denny Avdia, since Wes Unsell took over, his minutes are down, like four or five per game. And I just, did I say Wes Unsell took over? I meant since Wes Unsell got promoted and Brian Keefe took over, that Avdia's minutes have been deprioritized. Is that a trend? Is that a random thing? It has happened under Unsell earlier this season where Denny was getting huge minutes and huge, huge usage to start the season, pushed back to 23 minutes a night, pushed back to 30 minutes a night, And there was some ups and downs in the middle there. And now we're back to 25 a night. 25 a night's not enough for Denny. Let's see what they do with him. 
In terms of stream guys, uh, the Cockroach Mason Plumley probably is the Clippers guy that I want to stream, although we could look at Norm Powell, although his roster percentage is higher than I, I like to use for these. And then for the Wizards, it is Bilal Kulabali, whose minutes are relatively stable. It's just that his production goes back and forth because most of it comes from those low-volume stats like steals and blocks. Detroit and Cleveland. Um, I want to see what they do with Asar Thompson. Isaiah Stewart is out. I expect that they go to Kevin Knox, which again is a laughable statement. They might go to Gallinari or will. Monty Williams have the um, foresight to use Asar Thompson as a power forward and a rim runner and a pick and roll roller and a ball handler at times to mitigate the lack of shooting with Isaiah Stewart out. I doubt it, but we've got a chance to see what he does. For the Cavs, um, Jarrett Allen was able to put up good numbers last time. He barely played alongside Mobley. Mobley only played 20 minutes. They crossed over and they started each half, but they didn't play together a huge amount. So Allen's sell high window is open. Let's see what happens to Mobley's minutes. Do they bump up again? And does Allen suffer a crash? So you've got a sell high still available for Jarrett Allen. In terms of streams, I am going to go with Alec Burks. For the Pistons, um, even though the return of Cade Cunningham reduces some of that upside there, but Stewart being out probably means he can fall, find some extra minutes as Boyan pushes up a little bit. And then Dean Wade on the Cavs, even though he is on the bench with Mobley back, he still can produce for some deeper league value. You could also look to Isaac Okoro there. Unfortunately, it looks like Sam Merrill has gone the way of former Cavs streaming legend Craig Porter Jr. in being not good enough to be a major part of their rotation. The Sacramento Kings and the Miami Heat. Leaky Monk is in a huge dip at the moment, huge chasm. He'd been playing awesome, and now Kevin Herter is getting 32 minutes a night, and Leaky is playing 20. I wouldn't say that Leaky is playing well, but it's a long way from those 29 minutes. We know that Mike Brown did this last season. You have a poor run, you miss your first couple of shots, and you get benched. Simple as that. It happened to Herter multiple times last season, multiple times this season. It happened to Keegan Murray a lot more last season than it did this season. But even last game, he played 24 minutes. It's happened to Harrison Barnes. The only guys that doesn't happen to are Fox and Sabonis. So while Leaky's struggling, we're not dealing with him, I don't think. For Miami, I want to see Tyler Hero, who was featured on the Buy Low, Sell High show earlier today. Doesn't get to the free throw line at all. Is that a Terry Rozier thing? Nope. But there is uh, opportunity to see how he's able to you know, improve some of the recent performances from him. In terms of streams, it is probably Trey Lyles. You got a lot of those Keegan Murray minutes last game too. And for the Heat, well, it could be Caleb Martin, could be Haywood Highsmith. We'll see whether they make any changes. We also need to see what they do with Jaime Haquez as well, whose minutes have been down since he returned from the groin injury. Pelicans and Rockets. Uh, Herb Jones has popped up on the injury report. So what does that do for Ken Murphy? Trey played 28 last game. He scored all right. He does not look like a must-roster player to me. If Herb is out, I'd be more interested in having him on my team very clearly. But we just want to see if we can develop a 30-minute-a-night role and some consistency. Very interesting that they dropped Jordan Hawkins' minutes way down. So maybe that does portend an increase in value here for Trey. For the Rockets, Jollibee Jalen Green has been on a massive hot streak. Now, if you could sell him for a top 70 player, you would do it immediately. I don't think you've got any shot of being able to do it. But he's had back-to-back double-doubles. He's getting assists. His efficiency is way up. The pattern for him through two and a half seasons has been none of those things. Is he turned the corner? Well, that's what we want to watch. In terms of streams, Larry Nance is there for me on the Pelican side. And then Cam Whitmore is a stream. I don't believe that Cam Whitmore is a must-roster player. He was awesome last game. He was. Just go back and look through his game log, though, and you'll see big games and you'll see bad ones. And go check his assist rate as well, by the way. That's like one of the more embarrassing numbers you'll ever see. And with a fully healthy team, which they currently are, the Rockets, I don't see 25 minutes for Cam Whitmore. I also don't see him dropping 12 points in four minutes. So it's always very easy to look at the scoring. And Whitmore had 20 points last game. I go, man, look at that. He's so talented. He's got to get these minutes. And I agree, he is talented. But you're not getting 20 minutes in 18, 20 points in 18 minutes. And how are you getting 25 a night without completely cutting Brooks or Smith? Or I said the Rockets are healthy. They're not. Easton's out. Or Green. And I don't think they're cutting those guys. So Whitmore's fine to stream, but I would not be out here listing him as a must-roster player. The Dallas Mavericks. Well, I said I wanted to watch Luka Doncic, but I won't be. So I want to watch Jaden Hardy. I want to see, can this team keep it relatively close? But what else pops up? Well, watch for like randoms like AJ Lawson to step into minutes. Brandon Williams is a bloke that's on this team. Does Who starts at center? Probably Dwight Powell. But does Rashawn Holmes get a crack? Can Grant Williams do something? I, I don't know. For the Wolves, Jaden McDaniels still remains a fringe player to me. Him and Nas Reed 
are streamable without being must roster 12 teamers. Let's see if there's any change to that. There probably won't be. In terms of streams, I did have Josh Green on that list, and I still have Josh Green on that list, although Jaden Hardy very much jumps ahead of him because he's going to have to do a lot more creation, or Green's going to be a pretty good stream guy anyway. And Alexander Walker's got a little bit of stream value, which does push up if Mike Conley is ruled out. He's not a huge priority guy. We don't selling everything to get Alexander Walker in. But if you're just looking for a little one-game bump, then he can be relatively useful as we've seen in the last couple of games. He also might not be. Orlando, taking on the San Antonio Spurs. Last game, Wendell Carter Jr., and it was the back-to-back. He played limited minutes. Now, I didn't mention this on the recap show, but he did foul out last game, so that did drop his minutes down. But the game before, he was also pretty low. He'd been getting like 34, 35 minutes a night, and I go, that's crazy. He's never gotten that playing time in Orlando before, but have they changed their mind? And now I need to say, well, need to see, have they? Have they? Like, is he a 30-minute guy? Or is he a 34-minute-a-night center? Will they say, well, if Mo Wagner's rolling, we'll just push him out there instead of Wendell? Because if Wendell's a 27-minute player, then he's not a 12-team must. If he's a 31, he is. And if he's a 35, he absolutely is. But let's see how they use him. On the Spurs, Keldon Johnson actually has just popped up on the injury report as well. With um, What injury did they pop up with him? Let me just have a look. I think it was some, some, something fake, I'm sure. Um... Left elbow laceration. Ah, oh, he should be able to play through that, I'm guessing. Um, the Pacers also just ruled out Benedict Matherin today, but ruled in Halliburton and Turner, if you wanted to know. Porzingis is playing and Cornette is out. Not a shock with that either. That's for Tuesday. Um, Tuesday's action. Um, yeah, so Keldon Johnson with the elbow thing. His last game was really strong. I, I do not buy Keldon as a must-roster 12-team category league player. In points, you can do it. His minutes have been up and down. His production's up and down. If he's a 26-minute player, he's not a 12-team category guy, pretty comfortably, but let's see how they use him because he did play 30 minutes last game. For the Spur, or for the stream guys, John Isaac started last game with Fultz out. I expect Fultz is back and Isaac moves to the bench. Of course, he played only eight minutes, but what we really want to see here for Isaac, what is your role? Do you play 17 or do you play 21 or 22 like you played the two previous games? And then what does that do to Jalen Suggs? Because the, the lineup they run is Wagner, Bunkero, and Isaac at the 2-3-4. Very, very big. And that's, I guess, is that a path for 25 for Isaac? That would mean that Suggs and Fultz and Anthony all get big hits. So let's see how they do it. Julian Champagne for the Spurs continues to start, continues to be frustrating with the limited minutes. I'd also watch like a Blake Wesley who's playing all right at the moment. Denver and OKC is the next game. Like I said before, Nikola Jokic has popped up on the injury report. I, I think he will play, but if he doesn't, then it's unbelievably DeAndre Jordan. Who we go to? The headmaster, Jamal Murray, was on my buy low, sell high show. He's struggling a little bit at the moment. It's not a terrible drop-off, but I think there's a lot more that he can bring, so let's see what he does. And then I want to watch Kaysen Wallace for the Thunder, who could be in for an extended role if Jalen Williams is out. He's still getting his 21 minutes a night every night anyway, while Josh Giddy's minutes are way down. Wallace has been an unbelievable shooter this season. I don't think that he's a 12-team league guy. He's a quite poor minute or poor per minute fantasy producer, although his last three have been better. But we want to see, like, things change, things improve. Does his usage go up? Does he start doing more stuff that's not, you know, 60% three-point shooting? Let's see how that looks, especially if Jalen is out. In terms of streams, Reggie Jackson's probably the Denver guy. And then, as always, as I always regret, Lou Dort is on the stream list for the Thunder. And you could just obviously get embarrassed by uh, streaming him in because we know what Lou Dort does. And unfortunately, it's not good. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. We are here in 2024, and one move that you can make as a small business owner is hiring through LinkedIn Jobs because you want the best people for your job. LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. How do I know this? Well, 86% of small businesses said that they found a qualified candidate for the job that they wanted within 24 hours when they posted it to LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is just not a job board. It is LinkedIn. We know what LinkedIn is. And you get access to stick that job in front of over 1 billion professionals. Getting the right person for your job is super important. And as a small business owner, you may not have the time to do that correctly. And that is where LinkedIn Jobs and their suite of tools comes in to help get the right person in front of you to help achieve your small business goals in 2024. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. To post your job for free, terms and conditions apply. Let's go through the rest of these games. The next one is the Phoenix Suns and the Brooklyn Nets. Brad Beal was on my buy low, sell high show today. He's scoring his way down. He's shooting 23% from three, shooting under 75% from the line for the season for God knows what reason. 
it is going to improve, I'm guessing. Can I see it? It'd be great. And for the Nets, Ben Simmons is on the injury report with that knee problem. He was awesome in his limited minutes. So one thing I want to watch here is Simmons' minutes. How long does it take and where does it go to? He's at 18 last game. Does he get 22? Does he get to 25? Does he get to 30 ever? Where does it top out? And obviously the assist rate is out of control. It's not going to be that high. And then how does he impact everyone else? Because we saw Claxon's minutes push down. We saw Dinwiddie's minutes push down. We saw Thomas's minutes push up. And I think that'll be a consistent pattern. We'll see. In terms of streams, Eric Gordon will be the guy. If Grayson Allen is out, we stream him in for the Suns. You can stream him anyway, but his value is lower if Grayson is playing. And then with Dorian Finney-Smith out, Royce O'Neal had like only played limited minutes, Royce, but his numbers were pretty good. And he is definitely worth uh, a stream uh, more for those deeper formats, though. The Milwaukee Bucks and the Portland Trailblazers. I want to see Bobby Portis. Bob was... Um, he was really bad in terms of plus minus in that last game, but Doc did give him enough minutes. And what we want to see here with Glenn Rivers and how he deploys Bobby in particular, because uh, Adrian Griffin wasn't using Portis the way he'd been used in the past, and he hasn't been a 12-team league player. But Doc could change that, so we need to see how the role looks. And then for the Blazers, while Brogdon was on the buy low sell high today, they are pumping an inordinate amount of minutes into him. They're giving him a lot of usage and he's just shooting everything. Like he's at 44% or whatever it is from three. He's missed one free throw, I think, in the last two weeks, or maybe it's two. It's a crazy number there as well. And they're just letting him run the show. Again, pretty weird. So let's see do they keep doing that. In terms of streams, Leaky Beasley looks like the guy to me in Milwaukee who's been dropped in a lot of spots, rightfully so. But this is where we use him. And then Jabari Walker is like 75% available for the Blazers. The good thing about Jabari is that even on games when he sort of struggles or the shot's not there, they still get him 30, 31 minutes. And at some point, I think he's going to turn in better permanent numbers and better efficiency and be a really strong 12-team league player. At the moment, he's on the sort of borderline as like getting you a little bit with more upside to do more later on. That, uh, well, that, that's all the games. That's 10 games done. How do we chunk it up? Wednesday through to Sunday. Wednesday's a higher volume day with 10 games on. Friday's a higher volume day with 10 games on. So I'm going to ignore that from the chunk analysis, although you might have the ability to stream guys in. So there is no one that plays... Um, I was going to say there's no one that plays the three... Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. No one plays the Thursday, Saturday, Sunday quality game triumvirate. So who's got value? Jared Vanderbilt Bar plays the Thursday, Saturday. Kelly Olenek and Chris Dunn play the Thursday, Sunday. Uh, Andrew Nempard plays the Thursday, Sunday. His role is really interesting with Halliburton returning. Santi Aldama plays the Thursday, Sunday. Do I have any faith in Santi Aldama and the Grizzlies of him even playing? Nope. I don't know who's going to play every game for them. Is it going to be, is Aldama going to get knee soreness? Who else's soreness is going to creep up? I could throw Scotty Pippen into this mix. I could throw um, David Roddy. I wouldn't, but I could. I could throw a million different guys in there. Luke Kennard, like he'd be a great option. I don't know if he's going to play. That's going to be the frustrating thing with the Grizzlies, I think. And the other one there is Leaky Beasley, who doesn't... He plays Wednesday, obviously, like we just said. But then they are the only team that have the Saturday-Sunday back-to-back, the Bucks, which might be something that you are interested in. In terms of 10-team streamers, again, remember Jaden Hardy's not on these lists, but he is. Jaden Hardy would sit underneath Marco Fultz on this list. So we go to Nick Richards, we go to Marco Fultz for 10-team streams, we go to Jaden Hardy, Cody Martin, Jalen Suggs, Max Struess, who's now at the 57% rostered mark, which is my cutoff here, and Ayo Desumu on that 10-team list. If these are available in 12s, you go down that list and use them there as well. Um, for 12s, we go to John Isaac. Andre Drummond, because I think there'll be four or five minutes of crossover with Vooch. And instead of playing 13 minutes and he plays 18 minutes, that's probably enough to at least stream in on a day like this. You've got Larry Nance there. You've got the cockroach Mason Plumley, Jabari Walker, and the painter Matisse Thibel. For deeper leagues, we can go to Caleb Martin, um, Royce O'Neal, Daniel Tice, Bilal Kulabili, Reggie Jackson, and Haywood Highsmith, and lastly, points leagues, Jaden Hardy, top of this list. Then we go Io Desumu, Cody Martin, Jabari Walker, Andre Drummond, Yokai John Isaac, and the cockroach, Mason Plumley. And guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up over here. Hit the comments, hit all of that stuff. It's a, uh, an inordinately important way of helping out the show. Subscribe, notification bells, and check out the live trade deadline show Thursday, February the 8th, 1 p.m. I hope you have remembered that date. I'm sure you have. I've only told you a million times. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.